Hey Leisure Gamers, today we're making beer braised beef pot pie with a soda biscuit top. But to make things more interesting, why don't we call it beer braised middle earth meat pie. This recipe takes a little bit more time than normal, not because it's difficult, but because the two types of cooking techniques that we're going to use, braising and baking, are both slow cooking methods and just take some time. But the nice thing is, while it's cooking, you can go off and game. So let's get to it. The equipment needed for this recipe include a cutting board and knife, a large pan or a skillet with a lid for braising the beef, an additional pot to cook the vegetables, a large bowl to mix the biscuit dough, and some sort of baking dish to cook the pot pie. To prepare the supplies, start by opening a pack of stew meat and slice the cubes into smaller, more uniform pieces. Stew meat is easy to find at most grocery stores and is usually labeled as such. It works well for braising because the meat is either from the chuck, which is the shoulder region of the beef, or the round, which is the region below and behind the rump. Generally, cuts from the chuck or round are tougher with more connective tissue. These type of cuts require slower cooking methods like braising to break down the connective tissue and tenderize the meat. After slicing the stew meat, heat a large pot over medium-high heat and add one tablespoon of oil. Once the pan is hot, add in the beef. This is where our first active skill of braising initial sear is important. To properly start a braise, it's essential to sear the meat, which helps develop flavor and gives the meat a rich brown color. Since braising is a moist heat cooking method, proteins wouldn't normally brown like they would with direct heat cooking techniques. So we have to sear the meat before we add the liquid. After the initial searing, season with the measured amount of salt and black pepper. The meat will begin to release a lot of moisture, but continue to cook and stir the meat until all sides are a deep brown. Pour in the beer to deglaze the fond stuck to the bottom of the pan. Add in the dried rosemary and Worcestershire sauce. If you need to buy these ingredients or any other pantry items used in our recipes, check out Gamer Kitchen's online store. The link for our store is in the description of the video. Braising is a slower cooking method and requires continuous steady heat. After deglazing, bring the beer to a simmer. For our second active skill, braising fundamentals, the amount of liquid is crucial as braising does not completely submerge the item being cooked. Braising produces robust flavors because the ingredient being braised and the cooking liquid mutually infuse flavors while cooking. Because of this, it's important to integrate the sauce into the final dish. Once simmering, reduce the heat to low. Cover and slowly simmer the beef for about 30 minutes. We chose to use a dark lager because we wanted to add a toasted, malty flavor to our braise. In later episodes, we'll go into more detail about beer. But in terms of flavor, beer can be roughly broken down into two categories, sweet and bitter. Malt contributes to the amount of sweetness in the beer, as well as the degree of toasted flavor. Hops, on the other hand, are the main flavoring component to beers and add bitterness, but also floral, herbal, and even citrus-like flavors. The best part is you'll only be using one beer, which leaves plenty to drink. Use the time the beef is braising to prepare the other ingredients. If you need a refresher on how to cut the carrots, onions, celery, and garlic, refer to our first episode where we go into detail about cutting each vegetable. We will need to slice the mushrooms, so after giving them a good rinse under cold water, lay them on their side for more stability when cutting them into slices. The recipe calls for 4 ounces of mushrooms, which is half the normal size package you can find at grocery stores. Once everything has been prepared, heat another large pot over medium-high heat. When hot, pour in 2 tablespoons of oil and add the mirepoix, which is the carrots, onions, and celery, along with the salt. Cook until the onions turn translucent, then add in the minced garlic and mushrooms. Once the mushrooms have started to lose their moisture and reduce in size, add in the peas. Sprinkle in the flour and stir to evenly coat the vegetables. The flour is the starch that will thicken the braising liquid and create a gravy for a pot pie. The mixture will look clumpy and the flour will start to toast in the bottom of the pan. At this point, add in the braised beef and continue to cook the entire mixture over medium heat until the sauce thickens. Then remove the pan from heat. If it looks like it's too thick, you can always add one fourth of a cup of water at a time to loosen the gravy. It's now time to make the soda biscuit crust of the pot pie. At this point in the recipe, you can follow along like normal if you're feeling adventurous, or click over to our cheat code video which helps you finish the recipe by using store-bought dough. This helps you save time and gives you a chance to make the pot pie at least once before you attempt the scratch-made biscuit crust. Either way, start by preheating the oven to 375 degrees. First, mix together the flour, sugar, baking soda, salt, and dried thyme. 
Then, cut the cold butter into small pieces and press them into the dry ingredients with a fork. By using baking soda rather than yeast as our leavening agent, we are making a type of quick bread. Like the name states, these are very easy to make and don't require nearly as much time as breads made with yeast. Once the butter has been worked in, stir in the buttermilk. As soon as the dough is firm enough to hold together, use your hands to press the remaining dough together, scraping the bottom of the bowl to incorporate all the pieces. On a floured work surface, pat the dough into a shape that matches the dimensions of the baking dish. If the dough is too moist, add a bit more flour as you go. Flip the baking dish over to match the dimensions as you work. Spray or grease the baking pan with a lightly oiled paper towel and evenly spread out the beef mixture into the dish. Then top with the freshly made biscuit dough and lightly tuck the edges of the dough against the sides of the baking dish, sealing the filling underneath. Bake at 375 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes or until the crust is golden brown and the filling is bubbling. Let the pot pie rest for a few minutes before serving. Cut into square portions and top with the melted butter as a final touch. The soda biscuit crust should have a flaky texture with a crisp golden exterior. The beef will be extremely tender because we properly started our braise with the active skill braising initial sear. The filling will be rich and savory with a hint of malt from the dark lager we used when using our active skill braising fundamentals. If you have any questions or suggestions, let us know. Alright, Leisure Gamers, go try out your new skills.